Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, thank you very much to the NSTF for giving us the opportunity to come and share our thoughts and our ideas around technology transfer within manufacturing. Uh, I, I'm going to start off by explaining um, our relationship with uh, Gibela. I am working from this, for the Swan University of Technology. I'm a professor there of industrial engineering, and uh, our work through the years has been focusing on development of reconfigurable manufacturing technologies. This project is a project that was started off by the Technology Innovation Agency in uh, the late 2007, eight period, and it was run as consortia around preparing advanced manufacturing technologies for highly variable environments. So fr from that uh, relationship that we had with the Technology Innovation Agency, the Manufacturing, Engineering and Related Sector, CETA, uh, came on board to support us with the research chair where we focused <laughs> on um, developing manufacturing technologies but at the same time developing skills around uh, people with high-end skills for manufacturing. So when I was told that I need to talk about uh, the technologies that uh, South Africa needs to uh, needs to transfer around manufacturing. My thinking was maybe we need also to, you know, take our technologies to the world. In as much as uh, we want to try and get technologies from there, maybe we also need to have a conversation about what are the technologies that we have that we've developed here locally, we've patented, that we can take to the rest of the world. The Kibela project. Those who may not know about the Kibela project is the new is the is the company that is being utilized to modernize the commuter rail infrastructure. So if you look at your, those who drive past the railroad, you see that there is a, normally a yellow train, but of late there's been a blue train that has been, that runs there once in a while. So the Kibela project is the project that is manufacturing those blue trains that fit under the bridge. So every time I talk about <laughs> The trains uh, are being manufactured uh, for Kibela. People always ask me, do they fit under the bridge? Yes, these ones are fitting under the bridge. <laughs> As you can obviously see that they are running on our, on our railroad. So that project is a project in collaboration with the French. Uh, the, the French partner is a major shareholder in the collaboration. And because post-independence, for a long time there was a disinvestment in modernizing the technology around rail. This is why I think uh, early this year, the president was stuck for three hours between Joburg and uh, uh, I think it was Sushanguve or you know one of the places this side of the world. And, 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 and if you look at the distance where the president was stuck, uh, it was uh, a very small distance. And for me, it speaks to the challenges that we have around the state of our infrastructure. <laughs> And, and, and it co goes down to the question of manufacturing. So from a manufacturing perspective, are we doing the right things to make sure that we enable the services that the people in the country need? And for me, these are the questions that I'm going to try and answer. So in 2016, uh, we entered into a relationship with Kivela. We signed a memorandum of understanding to cooperate on a manufacturing technology development and skills development research chair and specifically in that relationship the reason why Kibela said they want to cooper co cooperate with us is because they are getting tech transfer from France but they also realize that locally there are technologies that are locally available that they can actually utilize for their for their in, in their plant and like I indicated earlier on we had some momentum taking off from the technology innovation agency around reconfigurable manufacturing technologies so there's a train that was designed uh, in France primarily. Some South African engineers were involved in the design of the train. And the idea is that that train gradually will be customized to um, the resources that we have here locally and components will be made in line with the things, the available um, materials that were referred to by the NSTF earlier on. And maybe the technologies already that we already have in terms of um, uh, locally developed material, whether it's polymers or it's um, alloys of different kinds. So from where we are seated, one thing that we've realized with, with this project is that you still have a lot of the components being uh, imported from countries like Brazil. And some of those components, if you look at them, 
you don't need to, to, to be an engineer to understand that those things can be made locally. Maybe the challenge could be, a, be around the, 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 the skills to ensure that the quality is right and the project management issues around making sure that things are delivered on time at the right cost. And, and for, for, for us, I think earlier on the panel that was here spoke with respect to the issue of skills. And I, 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 from, from where I'm seated, the picture that I'm seeing is that definitely we do need to work on the basic education system on one hand, but on the other hand as well, make sure that the, the skills that we're transferring from the university side are skills that are relevant from the industry. Because continuously you see that most of the students, I think the other colleagues that were speaking here, if you were here in the previous session, they mentioned that you realize that the students that you have, when, you, when, you, when, they, when they go, I mean the colleagues from Altotech will talk later on, uh, when they get there, you need to train them for another 12 months before they can actually be productive. And because there's this gap between what is transferred in the class and what actually needs to happen in the industry. So with this fourth industrial revolution, we've got the same challenges. I mean, from what we saw in Parliament about how people understand the fourth industrial, industrial revolution, uh, for me, when that conversation happened in Parliament, it was a microcosm of what, what's also happening within our higher education institutions, because everyone talks about the fourth industrial revolution. But the problem is, I think, not most of us understand or many of us do not understand what is what, what 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 are those things that we need to work on that will help us get to the fourth industrial revolution and for me it's a skills issue so it's it's it, it's getting those technologies that will help us understand the capabilities that we can have even before we actually procure the technologies and we are at this stage imp implementing a concept of a visual factory so the idea with the virtual factory is that we'll be able to um, play around with new technologies that need to be implemented around the manufacture of the train before we actually go to the train facility to implement the technologies. So the engineers from the train facility can come to our facility and spend some time playing around with permutations and different combinations of the things that they can utilize to improve productivity at the manufacturing facility without in necessarily um, interrupting the manufacturing process. So we've got an augmented reality, virtual reality project for the Kibela factory, but at the same time we are also busy negotiating, setting up a digital factory that will essentially replicate what is actually taking place at the, at the, at, at the plant and we can actually see on a real-time basis the things that are happening at the plant without necessarily being at the, at the plant. So our facility is based here, I think it's like a 10 minute drive from this place and the factory that we're working around is located 150 kilometers from here. So that capability of having a virtual space in which people can come and learn what is actually taking place in a real plant for us we think is a technology that we need to um, get from somewhere and we are already trying in the process of trying to leapfrog to that. The other spaces where manufacturing technologies can be transferred is with the uh, other departments that are not necessarily clearly manufacturing. So for example, the Department of um, Tourism, there's a conference that we're organizing. So we went to the National Park and we said to them, the conference that we're organizing is a design conference in production engineering. And from a production engineering perspective, now that we're coming here to the Kruger National Park, what are the things that we can do to make sure that we can demonstrate the relevance of our manufacturing capability for tourism industry. And then guess what they told us? They told us that the golf carts that they are using at the National Park are imported. At the university, on the other hand, we have been building the badger. I don't know how many people know the badger. So we've been building the badger for over 10 years. And uh, believe it or not, we have been winning that budget consistently to a point where the university said, well, I mean, we're always winning this thing, so it's useless for us to go and compete in the budget. Let's allow other people to go and compete in the budget. But the fact of the matter is, if we can build that rugged car that can drive in a rugged terrain, what stops us from making the golf cart locally? 
And then, speaking to the green economy that was spoken about earlier on, the guys at the National Park said to us, well, actually, maybe you guys need to think about uh, making this vehicle green and uh, utilizing solar energy in how it is um, driven around. Because most of our customers, we know it's expensive to implement the greener technologies, but most of our customers who come here can afford that extra expense and are willing and will happily pay for a service that comes with an environmental friendliness. So not just for the golf carts that are used to take blankets around and move people around the golf course, but also for the vehicles. If you've been to the Kruger National Park, I think you know that there's an airport there. The vehicle that takes people from the Kruger National, from the airport to where they're going to stay, if they're staying inside the park somewhere. But further to that, they were saying they, they are even willing to invest in development of vehicles that will do game drives that are green so that they can reduce their carbon footprint on the national park. So we, we, with the budget, we are very far from getting to that point of uh, these green cars. But I think most of you may be aware that we've got the solar challenge, solar car challenge that has been running for the past uh, few years. And as a university, we've been participating. This car is driven strictly by through solar energy. It drives from, it starts off here in mainland, somewhere behind us. Yes, behind us. And in front of you. <laughs> and, and, and it drives all the way to Cape Town on solar. So, so, so somewhere there is capability. Obviously, it still needs to be polished. Maybe we need assistance on how it's polished. But most of the time, I think the challenge that comes is that when people decide to go to the implementation, I think there were entrepreneurs asking questions earlier on here that, uh, you know, where are the entrepreneurs in the equations? That capability or that support or those incentives to say, we've got these students who are doing brilliant work driving this car from Pretoria to Cape Town, strictly on solar. How do we translate that into real, actual green vehicles that can be utilized, for instance, in this um, tourism industry at the National Park? So for me, I think there are possibilities there. Uh, I would have spoken about additive manufacturing technologies. I would have spoken about um, some artificial intelligent jigs that we are building for the trade manufacturing project. But I also think that there is a lot of opportunities around uh, drones as well. Um, at the factory, the Kivela factory, one of the challenges that they expressed to us is that they buy parts and the parts disappear. But on the computer system, it shows that the part is there somewhere. <laughs> and no one can find that part in the warehouse. So, so, so we are working on a, a, a drone challenge to help them identify where the parts are before the production guys come in the morning. So that by the time they arrive, you know, they know exactly where to go to, to get the part and uh, you know, go and utilize, in the, utilize it in the plant where they need to utilize it. But this is not a problem that is only peculiar to manufacturing as it were. I think with the solution that we can develop in manufacturing, we can transfer, seek for partners to transfer technologies from elsewhere. But I also think that we need to, as much as possible, allow the technologies to be homegrown and learn through making mistakes and arrive where the country needs to go to. The Defense Force is a, also another classical non-manufacturing type of a setup where no one would be thinking that maybe Defense Force is going to talk manufacturing. They were complaining to us when we went to the engineering conference that most of their machines, that most of the things that they are buying, obviously it's military, so it's got sensitivities around it. It's with a specific country. I won't mention its name. But the, the engineers, they are saying some of these components, we actually don't need to get them from there. We can actually make them for ourselves. And they also have this warehousing problem that uh, they, they, they buy these uh, artillery components and they sit somewhere in a warehouse and then the day that they need to utilize them it's either they are obsolete or they can't find where they are but the system says that the thing is there somewhere and and, and it's because of maybe of the nature of the, the way in which the warehousing is done so from a capability perspective the capability to use drones in those environments i think would definitely add value 
Uh, so for us at this stage, we are also thinking that we need to maybe expand our work, not just to focus on trains, but also to think about the other sectors of transportation, but focusing on manufacturing and making sure that we gradually and slowly develop that capability that we need. With these words, I think uh, these are our thoughts around tech transfer. Thank you very much, Program Director.